Speaker number four, uh, Maria Gay. Maria Gay. Heather, you have the floor, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to this committee. My name is Maria Gaither and I am a certified public accountant with over 24 years of experience, including 10 years as an auditor. As an auditor with Deloitte & Touche, I learned to evaluate internal controls, identify areas of risk and propose solutions to mitigate risk. Our current election laws create areas of risk for the potential for voter fraud. I'll give you an example. I can go to any polling location in my county during early voting, provide the names and addresses of my neighbors, obtain a ballot in their names, and vote. This would be illegal, but the chance of being caught are slim. An effective way to mitigate that risk is to require a valid photo ID issued by the government, such as a North Carolina driver's license, other cards issued by the DMV for non-drivers, a U.S. military ID, or a U.S. passport. In 2012, I served as a poll observer for the primary and general elections. I observed people of all ages, and races come to the polls to cast a ballot. Many of them had their driver's license in hand, even though it was not required. One of the early voting sites I observed on multiple days was the Tally Student Center at NC State University. Here I saw hundreds of students go through the voting process, and most students had their ID in hand. If a student can successfully navigate the college application process, I have confidence that they can obtain a valid North Carolina driver's license. The proposed bill provides funding for a driver's license for those who qualify for financial assistance. The proposed bill allows for some college IDs to be used in lieu of a driver's license, which should be removed from the bill along with the employee identification card. An employee identification card and a college ID do not mitigate risk because the voting voter's address is not included. I have my employee ID. It has my name and picture. It doesn't say where I live. And they can be um, uh, fraudulently prepared in some cases. An expired driver's license should be permitted to senior citizens, but not all ages, because the DMV had weak internal controls in the past for issuing driver's license. As a reminder, nobody can buy certain types of over-the-counter medication, such as Sudafed, without a driver's license, military ID, or passport. Certain prescription medications, for example, many pain medications, have the same requirements. You cannot buy these medications with a college or employee ID. I'm sure people of all ages, races, incomes, and party affiliations have the need for regulated medications. So why haven't we heard about the hardships caused by the strict photo ID requirements for those important purchases? The proposed bill has been watered down from the bill passed in the previous session. Now is, the time, now is not the time to go wobbly. Now is the time to do the right thing to strengthen the integrity of our voting process in North Carolina. Make the proper revisions to remove the employee and our college ID cards and pass the bill. Thank you, sir. The chair thanks you, ma'am. Speaker number five did not sign in. Speaker